Welcome, everybody, to today's broadcast. It's called Signature Sound. I thought I'd probably put this one in the archives, and some of you will say, I've heard this before, but there's probably going to be some new things you haven't heard. But I want to put this in the archives just for those that have, um, are not familiar with who I am and are going to watch this for the first time. And what I want to bring out today, kind of coming off the coattails of Dr. Rennie's interview on uh, sound, I want to begin to uh, expand that a little bit um, in, a, in a position of sound. Why is sound so important? Well, when you discover what sound is in the scripture, you're always going to see that sound is always first in the kingdom. Sound is always first. You'll see it in Genesis, how God began to uh, create. God um, creates by the utterance of his voice, because this kingdom is based on utterance. I'll say that again. This kingdom is based on utterance. If you want to see something, you have to say something. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? But then he said, let there be. So there's sound first and then light. That which was be to me made manifest was following a sound. So whether it's in Genesis and the creation, whether it's Elijah listening for the sound of rain, he goes, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And so which is a powerful testimony of itself. And how, 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 does, how do you train your ear to hear that? How do you create clouds when you do hear a sound? How do you do that? Um, then I'm going to stay in this lane for a second. David wanted to know, how do I take the enemy? And God says, listen for the sound and the wrestling of the mulberry trees there. And then you have the day of Pentecost, sound. Sound is something that is constantly a signature in the kingdom. So... Hear me carefully on this. A lot of people right now are praying for pain relief because of the global situation. Have you ever considered that God's not so much interested in you crying out from pain more than he is interested in you seeking this new beginnings of God on the earth that has never been sought out or seen before? Meaning, it's not that he doesn't hear your cry. It's not it's not that we want to be not only be relieved from pain, but I think the greater, higher thing here is... Don't be seeking out something just to be relieved from pain more than the new so sound that needs to be released in order to release the new value of what God wants to bring to the earth. Dr. Pfizer taught me that years ago. Uh, I think it was in one of his teachings, his writings or something. It just It's always stuck with me because a lot of people pray out of pain to get relief. Very few seek the new beginnings of God and try to stay with that in a sound position in order to release or open up the vault of what God has for this, this uh, time, this age. So when you begin to kind of unlock this all, it's really a powerful thing to understand, and I really wanted to get this out there. So, you know, there's some things that are out there that we have some, looks like insurmountable things that are coming against us. However, you've heard me say this also, if you want to know how, who you are in the spirit, you have to, you can measure yourself how great you are in the spirit by the size of the adversary that you're facing. If you want to know how tall or how big you are in the spirit, measure the opponent that's against you. David went against Goliath. When David went against Goliath, guess what happened? He got a check on the size of stature of who he was in the spirit realm because he had a giant in front of him, and he knew that he was bigger than what was in front of him, but it's also a measuring stick to see how big you are in the spirit realm. So the bigger the problem is that the answer is bigger in you. So when you begin to kind of look at that, you're just going, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to look at that, another way to measure yourself. Anyway, that being said, uh, we are, I've said this earlier, I said we are a kingdom that is, um, that is uh, based on what we say is what's going to be seen. And God modeled that, Jesus modeled that, and you have to get to this point where you can say this, I am the said of God. And when you can get to that reality, you're going to find out that the things that you say from that position, you're going to manifest the reality of what needs to be done in any given moment or situation. So I know those are kind of broad brushing, high sweeping statements at the front end, but I know that we have to have um, this utterance understood so we're not just trying to... Um, pray something through only, but something has to be said in order to see a certain thing. Back to sound again, a signature sound. 
<clears throat> and what I mean by an utterance, and I'm going to give a definition to it. I believe I wrote this down years ago when I was working with Lance. And it means this. Utterance means a voice that speaks from convergence. <clears throat> Excuse me, from convergence and remains in the atmosphere until it's responded to. That is so good. I'm going to say that again. This, this word utterance, because that's what this kingdom is based on. It's based on utterance. What is utterance in definition to the value of what kingdoms defines utterance as? It's this, a voice that speaks from convergence and remains in the atmosphere until it's responded to. In other words, it demands a response from those that hear it. So that is such a powerful statement, people, when you realize the value of what I just said there. What does that mean, convergence? What, is, <clears throat> what does all that mean? <clears throat> You've heard me speak a bit on it before, which is convergence. This is stuff I picked up from Lance decades ago. We, in fact, if you can go back and watch an uh, interview with him and I, it was probably 25 years ago is when I started out with him. But anyway, these are the things I, I picked up back in the day. And um, convergence is walking, or I'll put it to you, what I wrote down. Convergence is walking in a script that was written for you before you arrived. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you've got to find your purpose, and inside your purpose is the permission and the authority to say, say the utterance that's necessary to release what God has in that vault that can be expressed from heaven to earth when you say it. So it's really important. That's why we do what we did, we, what we've done at LLBD. We find your purpose because from your platform of purpose, you can say things and you will see things. Outside of purpose, trying to bring in something from heaven when you're not in the purpose of heaven, you're not going to see it. And a lot of people proclaim outside of purpose, trying to get a promise made manifest when they're outside the will of God. And here's, here's, here's what I say, what I mean by that is God's not obligated to source you or to protect you outside the purpose of you. That's why a lot of things happen to people and can't figure out why that happened. Why doesn't God do something about it? Now, hear me right. God's mercy is many, 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 many times comes in and touches a person, hoping they'll get back into the value of, okay, you've, you might have had something there that rattled you pretty good, but it should give you a, a drive to get into your purpose so that things like this, you don't have to struggle to get back on track again, but you actually move into the purpose of what God designed you to do. God's only obligated to source you and serve and, and protect you in the purpose of you. If you go outside of purpose, God's not involved with that. He, he's not obligated to serve that. Um, so you'll find that that's, that's a big deal. I won't go down the purpose road right now, but that's what I'm talking about. Utterance that's spoken from convergence or spoken from purpose is what unlocks the treasury vault that has been si assigned to your voice print. And your voice signature is very necessary to release things that are, that are um, from in, in eternity and to have them rush into time or from heaven's perspective to come rushing into the earth. So <clears throat> when you begin to really understand that, there are some very powerful things that God modeled. He created the universe from the words that he uttered. So you have the privilege to create the world that's around you by the things that you utter. God created the universe, but you create the world that you live in. By what? By what you speak. Your words are extremely, extremely powerful. So um, here's what I found out. A lot, of, a lot of people are captivated by the written word, but never speak the word. The goal here is to become the word. As Jesus modeled, he became flesh, and he spoke among us, if I can say it that way. It's like uh, the Barry Linhart paraphrase. But you'll see that when he wanted things done, especially in supernatural elements, he, had to, he spoke things. He, he said it. Now, it doesn't mean he, he, he went into prayer, obviously. There's things that he saw in the kingdom, and then to bring it from that realm to this one, he had to speak it, in, speak it through an utterance. That's why I keep saying this kingdom is based on utterance. That's what it's based on. From somebody that's in convergence or in their purpose, when they say something, they're going to see something. So what happens here is that you become um, very empowered not disempowered, but very empowered from this reality, meaning if you know that you're, you're in your purpose and you're in your groove and you're going down the road and something confronts you, 
you can speak to that thing, and that thing has to move because it has to move according to what? What is written about you before you ever arrived here. And when that has been written in heaven, nothing, nothing can stop heaven's intent for you through you. Nothing. And so one of the greatest things that you need to understand is, and I'll throw this in here, that purpose will protect you. There are things that you begin to understand, even in Paul's journey on the ship, when he became you know, on that ship and they went through the whole storm, the hurricane, whatever you want to call it. Everybody was protected on that ship because of Paul's purpose. And what you realize is that when God has initiated a purpose for you before you arrived, you step into that through convergence or this thing called convergence. You step in your purpose. God is now going to complete his word through you because God's word cannot lie. It's going to come to, fru- it's going to, come to pass when you're in the value of walking out that word. So there's powerful, powerful things that are, that are very um, elementary, fundamental in the kingdom that you need to understand. There, you need to say something. There's a signature sound that's coming out. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this to just kind of bring it into you now. There are things that you must say in order to release the heaven that's above you to release it to the earth around you. Your signature sound is necessary. And a lot of times we... we <clears throat> We kind of toy around, well, should I say something? You know, I prayed about it. Okay, you prayed about it. Great. Now, what out of that prayer can you say to the realm around you? Because, again, this kingdom is based on utterance. Can you say in order to have it manifest in front of you? So it's, it's a very, very powerful thing. I brought this quote in I, uh, years ago also. I think it was from Lance. It says, the signature sound is the authentic you, the authentic you, not the woes me, you, hey, the circumstance is greater than me, you, that whole thing. The signature sound is the authentic authentic you uttering a sound that causes the unseen vaults to release its treasure and marshal invisible forces to your cause. Invisible forces, angelic realms, things that come into attention because when you say the things that God wrote about you from the value of the written book, from heaven, then they know as much as that book is in heaven, when you align yourself with it, they actually hear your voice as if God was saying it himself. Angels don't follow humans. Angels follow uh, God's voice. Please understand that. There's no such thing as an angel following you around at your bidding, and you could say something and it's going to go. It doesn't work that way. Otherwise, if that was true, man, I'd have angels taking care of a lot of things around mowing my yard, painting the house, taking care of bills, going to the bank for me, getting money. It doesn't work that way. The angels hearken to his voice. And your voice is a signature of his voice when you're in the power of your purpose and when you're in that thing as far as what we call purpose and you speak from that platform, angels will take heed to that. And, of course, the purpose and the assignments that come to you through the purposes is when angels go to work for you. Marshalling uh, invisible forces. So... What happens is, is you begin to kind of go through these processes of this signature sound, and I, I have to say it this way. I've said this before. You have to show up in the sound of your voice so that God can show off. I'll say it again. You have to show up in the, in the power of who you are in order for God to show up. The sound of your voice means that you're showing up for God to show off. So when you begin to get that thing kind of, hopefully I'm starting to cultivate something inside of you at the moment. There are things that I know that in Scripture, I think it's in Psalms uh, 103. Here, I'm going to turn to the Scripture here for a minute. Psalm 103, verse 20. Let's see what's at here. Verse 20. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, not your word, his word. So important to understand that. Heeding the voice, there you go, of his word. And when you begin to really have that kind of percolating inside of you, you realize, oh my gosh, angels don't, they take heed to the value of what's, what, what word God had defined you as before you arrived. That's a powerful thing to think about right there. Because we're all in utterance. We are all words. How do I know that? Well, is back in the day, um, in, 
I think it was, gosh, maybe it's clear back in the beginning of 06, 07, somewhere. Anyway, I remember Dr. Pfizer saying this. He was talking about words. And, um, you know, we started off in God's mouth. That's how we started. Because he said, he said, let us make man in our likeness and our image. Stop right there. Let us make man. So he's uttering. And see, when God's word is so powerful, the minute you say, let us make man, words are rolling around. Words are rolling around in his mouth. You were rolling around in God's mouth. That's why he could breathe into the soil and the word became alive. Just like Jesus became, the word became flesh. Now listen to me very carefully. I want to bring out a point here, and that is this. Because we were God's word in his mouth, breathed in the soil, out came Adam, which means the, the male and the female, meaning when he... Adam came first. Obviously, the female was in him. But that being said, very powerfully, you have to understand, when the uh, woman took of the knowledge of good and evil and the man took of it also, they broke his word. They broke his word. They broke his word. Meaning, he said, the day, don't eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and of evil. The day that you eat of it, you're going to do what? Die. They died right there in the tomb, or in the garden, an unseen tomb came on, bam, it's over. So it's fascinating to me that God sees them as word. How do I know that? Because they broke the word at a tree. That's where they broke the word. God gave them a word, and they broke that word. That's what happened. So then you find out God sees us as a word, so therefore... He had to send a word, and the word became flesh, and he was broken on a tree for the redemption of the word that was broken back at the tree with the original two in the garden, named man, or Adam, and the woman. So words are very important to God. He actually sees us as a living word. That's what he sees us. The enemy is out to seek to rechange the definition of you so that when you speak it, it, the unseen realm goes, I don't know what you're talking about. But see, when you've been defined and gone through the processes of the definition of you, you'll find yourself that when you say words, things will become to manifest because it, it, to the unseen realm, it's, it sees you as if God himself was talking. If he's the vine and you're the branch, the unseen realm doesn't see the difference between the vine and the branch. It just sees the power of who God is. That's what he sees. So it's very powerful to get that, that, that signature sound of you in the value of moving in the purpose of you, of, of what God has designed for you, and then say something from that platform. Gosh, I don't know how many hours I've spent through the years, decades, decades, people, decades. But you find out that you, 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 you pray a lot and you never saw hardly anything because nobody, what I realized was, and the part of the kingdom is there's kings here, kings and there's the, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Well, kings say something if they want to see something. And I, I, I need to have that reminder given out to you so that you understand God actually sees you as a king also. So it's very powerful when this all ties together. If you're, seen as, if you're seen as a king, then it requires a king to make something law. And in order for the king to make something law, he ha- law you have to say something. So I, I, I hope you guys get this reality of what I'm trying to get across to you. But I want to bring something else with you. Um. If I can say this, I'm going to be probably, I'll probably get comments on this one, but this has been my observation. We have actually, in American Christianity, we have been more captivated by his written word than giving ourselves permission to be a living word. I'll say that again. We have been more captivated to um, by his his ability to to have this thing called the Bible that has been given to us, we know all the scripture in it, but we've never given ourselves permission to be a living word and speak from it, as congruent as one with the Spirit, led by the Spirit, moving with the Holy Spirit. Because what you begin to realize is it makes sense on a lot of things that you begin to realize a lot of prayer went out, but there was no utterance after the prayer, and so. Jesus didn't model a life of prayer only. He modeled a life of prayer and utterance. That's what he modeled. So when you begin to kind of look at this whole thing, is it's, it's very powerful, like I said earlier. 
when you have um, a signature sound, or when I say you're a signature sound, it's the authentic you uttering a sound that causes that causes the unseen vaults to unlock the sound of you. Nobody else can unlock them except for you. And when you unlock that, that opens up the treasury room that then begins to uh, marshal in unseen or the invisible forces will come to attention when the purpose of you is now seen. Because in order to see it, you're going to have to say it. So um, I'm going to go into something here I want to... Um, kind of bring out here really quick. <laughs> See, God always allows us to be as he is. He said, therefore, be imitators. So what happens is a religion will train us um, on how to have our words not believe us. I'll say it again. Religion has tra trained us on um, having our words not believe us. But I said this before. I'm going to say it this way a little differently so I can get this thought across. When you speak God's word, here's, here's reality, people. When you speak God's word, what happens is, this is really good, better write this down, pay attention to this. When you speak God's word, what happens is, is that your word leaves, God's word leaves your mouth. Okay, this is the beauty of him being the branch, or him being the vine and you being the branch. If, if you understand that, that reality, that means everything in that paradigm of a vine and a branch, everything is supplied from the vine. And when you rest in that, that means you cry out for nothing. It's the fruit from that is what God is after, meaning it's going to bear fruit. If the branch is abiding in the vine, the branch is going to bear fruit. Now listen to me very carefully. When you speak God's word, if you're actually in the position, you're congruent in your purpose, you are abiding in the vine, Jesus' prayer is being answered when he said, make them one as we are one. You start seeing the whole picture of what he was going after. What is he doing there? What is he saying? What's the end game that Jesus is looking for when he has that, that different prayer, only, not only in John 17, but the vine and the branch? What's he after? Here's what he's after. Speaking God's word or, God's, or speaking God's purpose or a word about your purpose, leaving your mouth. What happens is, is that when that word leaves your mouth, if you're using God's word, the word turns around and looks at you. God's word turns around and looks at you. It looks at you. And it checks and see if, if it's God that's saying that. Now, you can speak God's word all you want, but God's word is congruent with the voice of God. And if the voice of God is not speaking God's word, then it sits there and goes, you're not God, so why are you speaking it? Now, hear me right in that. If you're carrying the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of Christ in you, and you speak from the place that you know where you are is in the purpose of God and the authority of God, when you speak God's word pertaining to any situation or the written word or to the certain situation that God impresses you to say, that word looks at you, it turns around and says, yep, that's God speaking, and it goes out and executes on the behalf because it sees it as if God was saying it. If you say God's word from a place that is not of God, guess what? God's word is protecting itself. It protects itself. It protects itself. I, you can speak God's word all you want. I've seen literally thousands of people speak God's word with no result. Zero. What I realized was they're not speaking it from the Spirit of God. They're speaking it from fear, panic, desperation. And I'm not saying that you can be in places where you're fear, desperate, and panicked, and it doesn't work. But I have very few incidences where I've actually seen somebody speak the word, and it actually it pops what I found out was is that they were in the, the value of being it's okay to be the branch that's abiding in the vine, not a stick laying on the ground crying out a scripture that you're not even abiding. You look like God, but you're not abiding in it. So in desperation, you cry out and you speak God's word, and God's going, that's an image, but you're not connected to me. You hear the difference? You still maintain the image of God. You still got it, but you're not in the flow of God.
So you're trying to get the value of God being outside of God. It's really good. That's a very big thing that's, that I just said right there. And a lot of people want to say, oh, God's word is powerful. Yeah, but here's, here's another thing I want to talk to you about. I'm going to bring this out because I think I wrote here in my, my notes. Here we go. Hebrews 1.3, I want, to, I want to read this to you. Who being in the brightness of his glory, wow, that's a whole, that's a message, and the express image of his person and upholding all things by what? By what? It doesn't say the power of his word. That's not what it says. It says all things by the word of his power. When he had, had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, I have down here in my notes, um, um, somebody had written this down, but I, I put it in here. It says, I'm intrigued by the phrase, the word of his power. The power of his word implies that God's spoken or written word contains power in and of itself, and that while the source of the power is God. However, the word of his power suggests God's power is the central thing, and the word's sole purpose is to express the character of a God who is all-powerful. Gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that again. And that is so good because we, it's we've. I've, at least I was taught it's the power of His word. It's the power of His word. That's not what it says. The scripture doesn't say that. I'm gonna say it again. Hebrews one three. It says, and upholding all things by the word of His power. All words point to His power. I'm gonna read it again. I'm intrigued by the phrase the word of His power. Now. The power of his word, which is a Christian cliche that I've heard for years, implies that God's spoken or written word contains power in and of itself, and that while the source of the power is God. That's not, there's, it's not that far off. However, according to Scripture, it says the word of his power. Suggests God's power is the central thing. And the word's sole purpose is, is to express the character of a God who is all-powerful. Let me keep reading. God retains the power, and the word is nothing more or less than a window into that reality. Gosh, did you guys just catch that? I'm going to say it again. God retains, God himself retains the power, and the word is nothing more or less than a window. It's a window into the reality where we have shown what, 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 what we have showed um, we have showcased the window when we should have been showing off his power. That is a loaded statement, people. So let's go through that one more time. God retains the power and the word is nothing more or less than a window into that reality. We have showcased the window, which is the word when we should have been showing off his power. For thine is the kingdom, the what? The power and the glory. And how long is it for? Forever. Kingdom, power, and the, the power of that statement right there, I remember when I found this statement, I put it in my notes, I go, there it is. We keep showcasing the window, but we don't have the demonstration of who we're representing by the word that we said because we have it focused on the word, not on the power of who God is. That's why we have this thing that's so rattling to a lot of people that are so frustrated because they speak God's word and they can't see the power because they've never tapped into the power and allowed the word be the window for the showcasing and the demonstration of that power. We think speaking the word, speaking the word, speaking the word. Hear me right on this now. Speaking the word, yes, is absolutely necessary to create the window for power to, to go through. I would have to say his word is the conduit for his power. But when you just go from it's the power of his word, it focuses on a word, but where's the power coming from? Yeah, you you, you got to follow that because it's the scripture is very clear. Hebrews 1, 3 again. It says, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the what? The word of his power. That means all words point to his power. Therefore, the word becomes a window to which power flows through. 
Now, you might say I'm splitting hairs. I'm not. There's, those are monumental things to understand because if you want to know the difference between somebody that knows the word, Satan knows the word. So if he knows the word, and I can guarantee Satan knows the word better than anybody probably on this planet, bar none. Nobody can, can, can sit there and argue with him on Scripture. The problem is he's not associating it with power. He's trying to use a conflict of the word against the word uh, with somebody that has a word with no power. See, it's, it's you know, woo. Let me, let me keep going on with these notes if I can. Can I do that? <clears throat> Make you think. You guys might write on this one. I don't know. But I discovered this years ago, and I'm going, there it is. That's, it's, there's been times I'm just going so frustrated. How can you keep selling God's word with no demonstration of power and say it's God? He can't do that. That's, that's misrepresentation of God. Anyway, that being said, we have been more captivated by his ability to create a written word than becoming one as the word. Powerful statement. I long to encounter God when I read the Bible, having heard the word of his power, that I must push through the text to the very heart of Jesus. May God move me beyond the threshold of his word into the living space of his existence and his power, beyond the safe shoreline of his written truth and into the limitless depths of his immeasurable power. Wow, that's, uh, that's like, you know, I can just shut it off right there. You read that and listen to that over and over again. I'm going to say it again. I long to encounter God when I read the Bible, having heard the word of his power, not the power of his word, but the, power, the word of his power. I must push through the text to the very heart, to the heart, to the heart, not the mind. People quote scripture up here, it doesn't change anything. I must push through the text to the very heart of Jesus. May God move us beyond the threshold of his word and into the living space of his, ex of his ex existence, beyond the safe shoreline of his written truth and into the limitless depths of his immeasurable power. That people answered a lot of things for me personally, trying to put framework or words or definition. I don't know how many times we've, We've done things, uh, maybe I'm the only one on earth, but you do stuff and it doesn't come to fruition. And it says, God's word says right here. God says, it's right here, it's right here, it's right here. See, we've played with the word in our mind, not pushing through to the heart of who he is, thinking we understand God by this mind game called I can recite scripture, rather than becoming the word of his power. Not the power of his word, the word of his power. And when you see that you have touched into this immeasurable, powerful God, then you realize the word is the window in which this power can flow through. Hear me right, people. There is nothing wrong with the word of God. What I realized is, is the abuse of it, trying to get power by simply quoting a written word. Doesn't work that way. It works when it is you have become that word. From understanding and interaction with a powerful God, you speak the word, and the unseen realm all of a sudden comes to attention, and you realize something is happening in this in this moment, or even right now as I'm saying, I can feel it. There are things that you realize I need to be around this Almighty God in the power power of who He is. Do you not remember that He said, "You go wait, go wait." When he was going to ready to ascend, he said, go wait to be what? Endued with what from on high? More word? Nope, that's not what he, that was not the mandate. Go wait until you what? You are endued with power from on high. Okay. See, he's following through that he really believes what he says. It's the word of his power. Therefore, he understood that you have to have power in order for the word to work for you. You have to have an, you have to have a, 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 um, a, um, a, an encounter with who God is as a powerful God. We've tried to work God to be powerful by reciting a word. It doesn't work that way. This power is only going to be made manifest by the intimacy with you and him. Out of that, you will hear words that God will have you speak, and through their power will flow. Religion will let you have, you give you the permission to wear the sandals of Jesus, the written word, you're walking around in that, but it will not allow you to become the feet of Jesus. 
the feet of Jesus is, you know, you're going to find out that you actually have permission to move as him, be him. You don't need the sandals. You can walk in bare feet. You can still move. Doesn't, you don't need the sandals. Religion requires so many things around you to execute. Oh, you're now all powerful because you can quote scripture. You can maintain a moral code. You can do all of that, which is a whole other teaching of itself. But, you know, it's, it's, it's ludicrous, people. It is ludicrous to say that we, have, um, we fix our eyes on, on heaven and not give the solution to earth through Jesus. That's ludicrous. See, what religion does is it has you fixated on the Bible and read, read written word with no breath on it, and they, they think they're bringing heaven to earth. Obviously not. Um, <laughs> if that was true, we'd be seeing some stuff right now. But <clears throat> I want to read something to you. Um, uh, I don't know how, 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 how far do I want to go here. How far do I want to go? Okay, maybe I'll just bring it. I've already said enough here to kind of make you think. But um, there is um, definition. How do you get to the definition? How do you get to the purpose? And so what you realize is, is Jesus, that he was a living word. Obviously, the word became flesh. But see, the definition of him was not clearly known until the word was what? Broken open. On the cross, you found the definition of the word. Jesus was sacrifice, and he was redemption. He was resurrection. He was all of that. But that was not realized until he was broken open. There was no way we could access that power until the word was broken open. So good. So let me, let me, let me bring you some practical things. There are things that will, God will require for you to go through that will break you open to understand the definition of you. I'll say it again. God will take you into places that will break you open in order to get the definition of you. And what does that look like? Everybody, it's different. It's different for everybody. There's no set, oh, you, if you just go through this machine called broken open, you'll be great. You get on the other side, no, it's different for everybody. So, excuse me, there are things that you begin to realize. <sighs> let, me, let me just start putting a bow on this. Frustration is born when you say the word, and you don't experience the power of what you just said. That's where frustration comes from. It's when you, when you, um, uh, uh, when you utter a word and you don't experience the power of what you just said or the definition of the word, that you, whatever it is. Um, and that's, this is the thing that I'm saying right now, people. I believe I'm not trying to... I'm sh- I've shifted on this whole value of what's going on. I'm, I'm clear up. I'm with Dr. Rennie. I'm, I'm with Dr. Bob. I'm with all the people that are, are going to position themselves into not only the power of God, but also known as the glory of God. And that's why I have been so adamant about we need to unlock this new beginning that God wants to do on this earth, not to look for give us, give us relief from this pain. The byproduct of being in the glory of God, you're going to be relieved from the pain. But your motive, your intent is not to get relief from the pain. It's how do you usher in the new beginnings of God. And like I said, Dr. Pfizer taught me that years ago, and I go, man, that's a huge key right there. You put that on your key ring and never lose that key because it's not about trying to get rid of the pain that's upon the people. It's about discovering the new thing that God is doing on the earth and find out where's God's new beginning at. And, you know, for the day of Pentecost and, and starting a new thing, it wasn't, you know, the disciples were, on, they were, they were griping about him not, hey, are you not going to come back and just, aren't you staying around to rule Israel? What's going on here? You're leaving. So they had a situation in their mind, this is going to be painful being under this governance. That, and Jesus said, that's not what this is about. This is about the word of my power. So inside of you being a signature sound, you're going to find yourself that God will take you through processes that will break you open so the definition is clear. And we can talk about that in some other video. But all of a sudden you just realize hey, that finally makes sense. It finally makes sense. Me just quoting scripture doesn't, doesn't change anything. But when you become scripture, it changes everything. And that's my point. And uh, I hope you caught something out of that because, you know, there's like, there's like these sounds that are sw- swirling around all the time. You just realize all of a sudden you, you hear something. You just catch it. It just kind of whips through the atmosphere. That's what happens to me a lot of times. I, I catch something. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a, a short thing or it, it, it's very silent or it's really loud. But it's just... You, all of a sudden, you just catch it. And, you, and, and when you hear a sound, people, when you hear a sound, it makes you, you know, when something falls over and it begins to uh, capture your attention, something that you've known is, this is my mundane routine. 
This is what I do every day. And all of a sudden, the sound rips through the atmosphere. And it catches your attention. When you're in tune with the Spirit, this is how it works. You're listening for a sound. That's why I labor at the keyboard. I'm listening. I'm trying to find where's the sound. Where's this new thing that God wants to do? And all of a sudden, you hear something You hear something else that kind of begins to play into it. And you go, wait a minute. What's going on here? And you realize once you begin to tap into this sound, God begins to add to the value of what you're hearing, what you're hearing and what you're willing to align with and the value of what he wants to do. Well, he knows a heart when he's somebody is looking for the beginning. Forerunners look for the new beginnings. Religion stays in the past. They keep reinitiating what sin has done to you. God's righteousness always initiates a new sound and a new reality. So you're looking around, all of a sudden you see something and you hear, some, you hear something, and then you begin to realize, okay, what do you want to say in this moment? And uh, he begins to speak to you. That's what happens. And you realize something is about ready to happen, people, on this earth. It's coming in the form of a new beginning, not because you want to get out of pain. It's because you want the new reality of God, which alleviates all pain. Hear me right in that. I'm not belittling pain. I'm not belittling the evil that's on the earth. But I am putting first, what? The word of his power. Because somewhere along this line, we're going to find out the reality of what God wants to do and bringing the goodness of himself through you. I hope you guys got something out of that. We will all see you soon.